In this video, I'm wanting to show you how to remove some elements uh, from the background of an image as well as a, a few changes that we'll go over. Uh, the main thing that I'm wanting to do, you'll see, I have this image of a building in Paris. And if I push in on it, you can see that the Eiffel Tower comes over the back. And the way that it lines up, the way that it looks with the building, is a little bit awkward. So we're going to remove that from the background. We're going to take it out. Uh, this is one is a fairly easy job because, for one thing, this is a high-res photo. I took it myself, so it has good resolution. Um, and then in addition to that, the background is clouds, which is really easy to remove things from because essentially what we're going to be doing is using both an automated process and then a manual process to get rid of that element in the background. I'm going to start first off by unlocking uh, this background image. I always also like to rename it to something main, main image, something like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of different selection tools. The main one for this purpose is going to be the polygonal lasso tool. Now if I select that this one is a very user-friendly tool, in my opinion. Uh, so what I can do with it is click, click, click a point, and just continue moving up. I'm doing a very loose selection all the way around it. You'll notice right now this is a gray line as well. Uh, when you actually make a selection in, photo in Photoshop, it's a uh, blinking it's sometimes referred to as marching ants. You'll see in a minute, but right now since the selection is not complete, it's not working that way. Okay, this is I'm not going to do this all the way down. I actually forgot what I was doing for a second, which is why I have this weird a little extra wing there, but it shouldn't be a problem. I'm not going to cover all the way to the bottom because down towards the bottom is actually going to require a little bit more work. You notice we have it kind of coming off the top of this chimney. That's going to take a little bit more effort, so I'm going to leave myself a window of space here. And what I'm going to do is use an automated process that gets better every time Photoshop comes out with a new iteration. And it's found under Edit, Fill, and what I'm going to use is Content Aware. A Content Aware Fill is supposed to look at the context around this area that I have selected. And it's supposed to try and fill it in with what it thinks is roughly going to match that background. So I'm going to do that. Hit OK. It's going to think about it for a minute, and then it's going to remove the tower. Now you can see that actually went pretty well. I, I told you it works well over clouds. Here, this was no exception. Uh, so let's see what kind of the aftermath is here. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect, and then I'm going to scroll down. And you can see it created some some small changes in the clouds over here. Fairly negligible. Clouds are really easy to work with up here. But the weirdest things that happened, and this is why I cut it a little bit short, is it tried to pull in little bits of the roof. It really does not look quite right. So what we're going to do is remove that part manually since it did such a good job removing the rest of it up here. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom and since this is a nice uh, easy to follow piece of geometric construction, this chimney is, it's all rectangles. I'm going to follow along the edge of it using my polygonal lasso tool. I'm not going to get it exactly precise, but I'm going to get fairly close. Alright, now that I've done that, that I've covered that part, the selection is still obviously not closed. I'm going to give myself a big area of space here. This is just simpler, giving myself space. I'm going to stop short of these leaves on the side, but I want a nice area of clouds to work with because I'm going to be using the clone stamp tool, which is a little bit complex at first, but then once you get used to it, it's actually quite easy to use. All right, once I finish out the selection by going to my original point and clicking, I'm going to use the clone stamp to get rid of all of this extra stuff on top of this chimney. The clone stamp is over in the left toolbar. It actually does look like a stamp. If you hover over it, it says clone stamp. And it behaves like a brush, so you're going to get all of your normal brush tools up at the top, your normal parameters. But it's unique. What it paints is not any particular color, but what I do is I hold down Alt or Option, and it gives me this little target. If I click over here in a nice open area of the clouds, what it's going to allow me to do is to paint essentially that area of clouds. It's easier to show than it is to explain. For example, if I take that now and come down here, you can see 
it's showing me basically what I'm going to be painting with and then as I click and drag I can cover it with clouds and you can see that little cursor up at the top moving it looks like crosshairs that's showing me where I am pulling from so basically I'm duplicating another part of the image and placing it down here because of this you'll start to see a little bit of duplication duplicated concepts for example this open hole was in the clouds and you can see how it was being repeated down here now it didn't get too severe but if you're not careful with the clone stamp tool then you can start to repeat a texture over and over and it becomes really obvious that it was done however this one seems to have worked pretty well if I deselect it's now almost impossible to tell that there was ever a tower up there there's still a little bit of goofiness in the clouds up here I think but what I can do is just take a really soft clone stamp pull from somewhere like over here where the clouds are thick and just kind of brush over that a little bit ah, but you can see I started to go too far down and a piece of this roof started to come with it this is why you have to be really careful with the clone stamp because if you get too close to something it's going to duplicate the picture it can't tell what is clouds and what is building so I just had to be responsible with its use so let's try that again this time without the horrible failure I might even go with a smaller brush size I just paint a little bit of this in pull a little bit from over here paint a little bit of that in a little from up here doing something like that will usually give you a better result uh, if I look really closely I can tell that I've done it but that's mostly because I know that I've done it the average passerby especially with clouds would never have any idea that something had happened so that's the basics of removing we use two different methods the clone stamp and the content aware fill and the combination of those two are very very powerful for removing elements especially over easy backgrounds like skies if I was wanting to remove something from down here say this hideous trash can I'd probably use the clone stamp and it would probably take me a long time I'd have to be very meticulous uh, so more often than not if you do need to remove something hope and pray that it's over something nice and textured like clouds or maybe in the midst of these leaves even would be easier to do when it comes to man-made structures and structures and figures over backgrounds like this it gets a lot more difficult